Howdy, this is Paul Salt from iPhone Dev TV, and now we'll talk about types. So like I've talked about before, there's different kinds of information that we can store on the computer. There's numbers, there's text, there's pictures, there's videos. Let's look at some of the C types. To start off, we have short, int, and long. These are all integers or whole numbers. You can have numbers and values like negative 1, 0, or 1 and they range in sizes. We'll get into that in a second. Next we have float and double. These are any number that has a decimal place or real number. After that there's characters or what we say car and there's A, B, C and other alphanumeric values we can have here. Then we have pointers. You can think of these as a house address. We call these memory addresses in the computer and this allows us to reference and refer to different portions of memory on your hard drive. So int star, the asterisk is something that we call star, is a declaration of a pointer. We'll go through an example on how that works. And lastly we have the struct. This is short for structure and this allows us to create compositions of information together. So you could create a point with an x and y coordinate. Let's start with the integers that we have different types for. So you can think of this like the different sizes at a McDonald's. You have small, medium, and large. Short is going to be the smallest value. Int is going to be somewhere in between that and the long. And then long is going to be your largest value. And so if we were to try to store that really big number there in our small short, we would lose the information or it wouldn't work. This is kind of like trying to pour a 32 ounce drink into a 12 ounce cup. You're going to have an overflow and not all of the drink is going to fit in that cup. We have the same problem with numbers and information. If you try to pour too much into something that's smaller, it doesn't fit and you can run into issues where you lose data or you cause your program to crash. Next we have float and double, and you can think of these in a similar fashion. The float is going to be smaller and the double is going to be larger. Generally, when we say that the float is smaller, it's less precise, so that it can store less decimal places and smaller numbers. When I say smaller, I mean that it can't store as many decimal places. So if you were playing with any of the exercises, you might have seen number like 3.14001 and that's because floats just don't have exact information so sometimes you'll have to account for some error in your numbers. Now a double is much bigger and can store a lot more information and so if you need something that's precise this is the way to go. Next we have the characters and so we can store something like the first letter in a variable or we could store the percent sign. So maybe you're dealing with uh, sale prices and stuff and you want to be able to display that on the screen. This is how you could store it. Maybe you were dealing with sale prices and you wanted to display the percent sign in your application. This is one way to do it. All right, so I talked about pointers before. And now let's go through a little demo on how they work. So we have four lines of code here. It is a little bit complex. That's okay if you don't understand it the first time. We'll be revisiting pointers a lot because we'll be using them extensively in Objective-C. As I've said before, a pointer is like a address to a house. It allows us to modify the attributes of the house can think of this like giving a painter your home address. You want him to paint your kitchen blue. You will need to give him your address in order for him to do that. If you don't do that, he won't know where to go. So let's look at the sticky notes. We have two variables here. One of them is our address int pointer, and our other one is our integer that we're just storing a value in. 
each one of these has some memory address where it sits in your computer, much like a house address. If we look at the first and the second line, we can get those initial values. We set the address to zero, also known as null. And we initialize x to its first value. On the next line, we're going to be taking the address of x and storing it in our address variable. The ampersand means the address of, and so we would read that address equals address of x. And when we do that, we get that 0x 5544 value and we store that. So now we know where to go to change the information. The next step is to actually change it. And so this is like bringing the contractor to your house. You give him your address, he drives over, and then he can paint your kitchen. And in this case, we can change the value of x by using the address that we were given on the previous line, and it now becomes 27. So that's it for pointers right now. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments below. I'll create a discussion on Skillshare. Next, we have structures. These allow us to group information together so that we can pass it around and organize our programs. In this case, we want to store an x and a y coordinate for a point. So that'd be something like 25, 100. The top portion will create that structure, and we declare this above our int main function. And then inside of our int main function, we would create a structure and then initialize the values. So to initialize, you say something like struct point A, and that creates it much like we were doing with int A. And now we can initialize those values. So a.x is a way that we can sort of index or refer to that x variable inside the structure and set it. And a dot y is a way to do the same for the y coordinate. Once we do this, now we can just pass a to a function. Once we have a structure set up, now we can pass it around. And instead of passing two parameters to a function, we can pass a single one. So this is a way of organizing your information so that you have less things to type. And it allows you to sort of consolidate ideas so that uh, you can really express uh, stuff, so that you can express information like points. You might have a lot more information that you want to group together and you don't want them separated. So this is, this is really a good way to keep that organized. So that's it for working with structures. So what we've learned today are these different types. We've got our integers, our floating point numbers, also known as decimal numbers, our characters, pointers, and structures. We'll be using these to create complex programs, and we'll build upon a lot of these concepts as we move into Objective-C. In the next video, we'll get into working with Xcode. We'll write real code, we'll make some mistakes, and I'll show you how to recover from those mistakes. I'll also give you tips on how to use Xcode to solve problems.